I'm just going to cut the plastic lightly and try not cut through the wire and hopefully my theory is correct is that wire will actually just pull, pull to bits so I'm just going to very carefully cut around it and there we go Alright, so now I'm going to go into the vehicle and I'm going to first check for any fault codes and I suspect that the P0235 code will be there so I'll go and select the vehicle I'll do a system, I'll do a health report So, so far it's found um, one fault code. Okay. Now it's saying it's got two fault codes. One DTC in the engine control and one in the body. I'll come back to the body one, but uh, I'll just do the engine one for today. So we'll select it and see what it says. Okay, and as we suspected, it's the 0235 turbocharged boost control sensor circuit. If you do a Google search on this, um, um, you just run in, run the report through Google. It's a very generic code. Um, just tells you is it's a generic code. It's triggered when the engine control module detects intake boost pressure sensor A input malfunction compared to the manifold pressure at idle with the key turned off before start in the engine. So I don't know how we have it idle with the start on the engine. Can't find anything on the ZD30 in relation to this actual uh, fault. Um, as I say, it is a generic code. The map sensor on this is on the um, intercooler and there's only one sensor in the actual boost pressure circuit, which is the map sensor. And the map sensor for the ZD30s just to protect for overboost, and that's its only function. It uh, feeds into obviously into the ECM. So what we'll now go do is we'll go look to see what the barrow pressure is, and we'll see what the turbo boost charge sensor is. Okay, so we see our barrow is at 99.67 and our turbo boost is at 98.42. So obviously there's a variation of uh, 1 uh, kPa in between that. And as we saw before, our turbocharged boost control valve is at 14.84%. So we're not running at the moment. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to unplug the current map sensor and we'll see what that does, so it should just drop down to zero okay so it's now saying our turbo boost has gone up up by one and it's unplugged, now I'll plug in this here Okay, so I've just replaced it and uh, that's the reading we've got with the new one.
Okay, so I'm just going to um, turn the car off and I'm just going to rerun a health report and see if it comes back. Okay, so I just uh, connected the the new sensor and I was getting the same reading in the position. So what I've tried to do is I've done a wiggle test. So I've just put the old sensor back in since they both give the same reading. And as I move the wires around, you see it drops down to 13 to somewhere. And I've just moved it then. Pull it apart. Somewhere I've got a fault in this wire system here. And that's what I'm moving. And I get a different reading. So I'll just touch that and I'll watch I'll watch the monitor. So I've got nothing at the moment. And same thing, I'll move it down that end. So on under the actual inner cooler. I'm also getting a reading. So I don't know if the camera picks up there but the tape's starting to wear thin so there could be a fracture in there so I'm going to pull apart that wire and see if I can find a break. Okay so I've peeled back the, uh, the wire from the boost sensor and exposed it. You know, as you can see is this section here there's some uh, heat shrink where the uh, tail of the plug leaks into the loom. As we can see our current sensor is 101 so it basically is telling me it's not reading anything because if I disconnect it that's the same reading I get. And just after the heat shrink and where the brown comes into the heat shrink you can see there's a cut. Now if I push it that way it's not going to do anything as far as the reading goes if you can pick up the reading on the screen. But as I bend it, and that's the position it's sat in. So it goes back to the 98.4, which is, I presume, is the correct reading. So I'm presuming there's a, a break in this wire in here, or there's a short in the wire, because it's, if I hold everything else still, touch the sensor, nothing changes. As soon as I move that, that bend there, it'll drop to 13. I don't think it's further up in the loom. So I'm going to take this heat shrink off and see what's going on on here. So you can see that that's where the uh, heat shrink ended. That's where the cut is I could see. I've taken back some heat shrink now. You can still see the brown sheathing through this cable here. So it's definitely a cut in here. And as I keep coming back on the, on the uh, heat shrink here, we're back into the, the tail of that wire. So I'll just very carefully if I can cut that open. Okay. I'm going to take, a, take that bit off, off again off camera and I'm going to have a look inside the separated wires. Um, obviously there should be the three wires inside and I'll turn the camera back on in a second. Okay, so I've peeled, peeled that bit of brown wire where the wires started and that's where the crack was in the brown sheath wire. So there's actually no join in there, it's actually the wire. So I'd, I think the heat shrink's just there to stiffen it up to make, make it a bit uh, stronger as it comes around the bend. So looking at the wires, there's actually no break, or no visible break, there's no cut in the wires. And this is where, this section here was where that round wire was cut through. But if you push the rest of the wire, like if I just grab the wire there, it's stiff. The thing here though is, it flips and you can see, you can see it's flipping there. So it's not actually cut through. But it's very, very loose. Now, if you look at, uh, if you can see the screen at the moment, it's still sitting at 101, which is saying it's not actually reading the sensor. So, if I 
hold this, try and do it as best I can with the camera. And what I'm going to do is push the wire together and try and make that join, and that should then go down to 98, which is then showing me there actually is a break in the wire. Okay, so it's connected. Now if I let it go, it stays. If I bend it over, it drops it. So now we're not reading anything, there's no signal because the wire's been away. Uh, straighten it up. As I say, you can't actually see the break in there, you just know because it just flexes a lot more. So that's where my fault is. So I'll push it together once more. Hopefully got enough to get the wire, so I've got the sensor reading. Bend it over, I get that 13. I actually did some power runs um, with the Think Diag and I actually saw the turbo dropping out at certain spots and I didn't understand what it was at the time, I just thought it was just the turbo. So obviously this boost sensor is, is, was faulting as it was vibrating. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this, uh, re-solder it together, uh, I'll retest it and then um, we'll see how we go from there. Okay, so what I'm just going to do just before I actually cut that and resolder that, that wire there, I'm just going to cut the plastic lightly and try and not cut through the wire. And hopefully, my theory is correct, is that wire will actually just pull, pull to bits. So I'm just going to very carefully cut around it. And there we go. So there was no actual wire actually holding those two together. So that's where my break was. Um, before when I took off the sheathing and you saw that, that outside wire, that's just a sheathing round round um, the three inner wires, it's just a protection. So obviously an abrasion protection. Obviously didn't work. So I'm just now going to clean that up, solder that up, and we'll uh, get it back together. Okay, so I've now re-soldered that uh, white wire. I've got two layers of uh, heat shrink on. The first one's a smaller one. So I'm not worried about this gap here. I'm going to tape it up in a second. As you see, we're at uh, now in our map sensor here, our turbo boost sensor, we're 98.42. Uh, we can do move it around now. Wiggle it. We're not dropping out a signal. So apart from uh, re-taping this up and putting some sheathing over it, that's, uh, that's fixed. Okay, so it was worth doing the wiggle test to try and trace that, that break back down in the wire just through vibration. Okay, so we've now got the intercooler back on, we've got the map sensor back in, the cable's all tied up. We can wiggle it. It's this bottom one here we're looking at. Number's now not moving. So that's a fix. So we'll just put the cover back on and uh, that's done.